So I'm going to welcome you all to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. Uh, I believe this is my last broadcast from Mexico. It's the next broadcast most probably going to be in Los Angeles. So... <clears throat> And today's subject is nothing. So let's hang out in this space. Just hang out with me, be here with me. And be here with me without any expectation. without any topics, without any conversation, without any magic or anything really exceptional, any sort of special meditation or just hang out. Let's hang out together here. For nothing. And in hanging out for nothing, let's see what comes up, what transpires, what may appear, what may reveal itself to you. Because the nature of the mind is like, what are we doing? What are we talking about? Where are we going? I need to know. I need to figure out. And that's only to enhance and strengthen your ego, the sense of me that really needs to know things. So maybe it gets a chance to relieve itself from helplessness. But let's keep it in this place of helplessness. Let's just operate from not knowing. See what happens. Give yourself a chance operating from not knowing. And you don't even have to like it, okay? Because this is not like something designed to satisfy these senses to bring satisfaction. This is a way of going beyond the senses, pleasure of senses, because we've been doing it. We're all experts in doing it. But what's beyond the pleasures of senses? What else is out there? If I'm not pleasing myself, where I'm not occupied suffering, is there anything else? Can I go deeper? Where is the deeper place?
even if your mind gets bored, you get the feeling like you're wasting your time. Or when am I, when is Zarathustra going to be talking about something? Just remain watchful. Just remain aware. Be aware that your mind is requiring some kind of distraction. The mind wants to be entertained. Stay with nothing. Stay with nothing. Give yourself a chance to dive within. Give yourself an opportunity not to be entertained. Allow yourself to be bored. Don't be frightened from being bored. Don't be frightened from not having anything to do in this moment. See if you can do it. Be bored. And be unentertained. So what? Hang out in this space. It's empty, it's boring, there's no entertainment. But you may have to face yourself. Because at any moment you want, you can press the exit button and you can just walk out of this meeting. No one's forcing you to be here. You have chosen to be here. But I don't have anything to offer to you except being boring. So you can walk out and go watch a movie. Go to Netflix or go call your friend. Here, I'm offering you nothing. If you're satisfied with nothing, then stay with me. you want something, go to Netflix.
It's interesting because we always want to go inside something. So it's kind of like a obsession that we have developed to go inside something. And we're not even aware of it. And it kind of starts with like a man wants to go inside a woman. So his mission is always to go to find a woman to go inside them. A woman wants a man to go inside them. Then you go inside into a car. You go inside a plane. You go inside the ocean. You go inside a restaurant. You go inside a train. You go inside the building. You go inside the bathroom. You're always going inside something. But you never pay any attention of going inside yourself. How many people throughout their lives ever go inside themselves? Barely. It's very rare for a person in the life to go inside themselves. Because everyone wants to go inside something else. And when you don't go inside yourself, naturally, you don't know what is going on inside you. You don't know what's going on inside your body. You don't know your organs. You don't know how your digestion works. You don't know how your nervous system works. You don't know how your circulation works. You don't know how your lymphatic system works. You don't know how your psyche works. You don't know how your emotions change. You don't know your thought patterns. You don't know what triggers you to fear. What takes you up, what takes you down. And you go to other people called experts and you have to pay for them to go inside you. Pay attention to this because it's very important. And maybe today you want to mark it as a day that will transform your life forever if you pay attention and if you really get it. How much time do you spend going inside yourself? How much do you know yourself? How often do you take the time to go inside yourself in comparison 
to as much time and energy you put into going inside other things. Think about it. How much time do you spend going inside another human being? Thinking about it, planning on it, strategizing, getting yourself ready. Versus how much do you really spend going inside yourself? It's much easier and convenient and safer to go inside somebody else or something else. It's frightening, inconvenient, scary to go inside yourself. Because if you go inside yourself, you may discover things that you don't want to see. Or you may discover beyond that. Maybe you find your dark side. Maybe you have to face your darkness. Maybe you have to look at yourself. Maybe you have to face your fears. Maybe you have to fear, face your being impatient. Maybe you have to face boredom. Maybe you have to face self-hatred. Maybe you face self-love. Ooh, wow. Then what? Maybe you face emptiness. Or maybe you face patience. Maybe you discover peace. What happens then? Wow. Mm. No, 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 no. I don't want inner peace because I'm so addicted to anxiety and fear and worry. that I can't handle peace. It's too dangerous. No, 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 no. I don't want that. Very few people on this planet Take the time to do an inner exploration. Very few people on this planet, they've got the bullocks, they've got the balls, they got the courage to do inner exploration, to go inside themselves. To dive within, it's got different stages. Because once you start to dive within yourself, a part of it is that you have to become quiet. You have to become silent. And that's very frightening. It 
it's very much against the principles of everything you've been taught from childhood. It's like an earthquake, inner earthquake, because you're diving within yourself. And a part of that is quiet. And that brings fear. Fear with you and around you. Other people also get very frightened when you all become quiet. It threatens them too. Because the more quiet you become, the more deeper you go within yourself. It's like being in a submarine, which is traveling into your own psyche and it's going deeper within. And you're discovering layers of your subconscious. You're discovering things that exist within you. First, you have to go through those stages. You can't not face different levels and layers of your own psyche when you go into silence, when you're traveling within yourself. And you're going to see ugliness darkness, anger, jealousy, fear, hate, envy, different desires, sexual desires, aggressive desires. You get, have to see that, that they're within yourself. You have to face your own demons. That's why majority of people on the planet choose to be entertained. Give me a workshop, Zarathustra, that entertains me. I'm not interested in any kind of teachings that forces me to be quiet. I'm not interested in any teachings that forces me to go inside myself because I may discover ugliness. But you can't come to beauty without ugliness. You cannot come to freedom without traveling through your own fears. You can come to a place of acceptance without going through your ego. That's why in so many ways, inner work is the most difficult work to do. And it does require instructions. It does require a teacher. It does require somebody holding your hand and showing you the way. Especially when you get so frightened, so scared, and you fall back into your old ways.
which is distractions. Looking for distractions. It's a very, very tricky business. It's got a lot of ups and downs. Right, one needs to be resilient and stay on the path. And there are times that you may discover that you're not going anywhere. You're going to be facing that in your spiritual development, that you feel like you got to a certain point and then you lost it. Or you may get to a certain point, all of a sudden your addiction kicks in. You fall into drugs, pills, you fall into alcohol, you fall into chocolate, you fall into you hit a streak of anger, jealousy, doubt. All of a sudden, something comes and grabs you and sucks you into that thing. But that's not a bad thing. It is if you don't have guidance. It is if you don't know that that's a part of your where you are because you're going deeper and deeper and deeper. So you're gonna have to go through the dark. It's inevitable. And the dark is normally associated with death. because something must die. Something needs to peel away. And that's the ego. That's the sense of me, the doer. I am someone capable of making my own decisions. I got my own free, free will. I am powerful. I am the one who does things. And the, go, the deeper you go through yourself, the more you start to discover that this me doesn't even exist. So it gets frightening, it gets scary. That's where your addiction starts to come out. Whatever they are, sexual, drugs, sugar, food, whatever, you just go buy a lot of clothes, you buy a lot of shoes, you buy a lot of watches, you buy glasses, whatever that, whatever that is. That's a part of it. You have to understand that that the inner work, when you're going diving within yourself, it's got layers and layers and layers that you have to cut through those layers. And things start to bubble. That's why I say it's so important that you implement a habit, a practice of being quiet. 
implementing a practice of staying still, training yourself every day that you take the time that you are quiet and you're still. And in stillness and in being quiet is you begin to see and have visions, feelings, emotions, the dark, the light, stuff, stuff starts to bubble, anxiety comes, anxiousness comes, you get anxious. But you're still, you're determined to be quiet. You're watching, you're witnessing, and your sense of awareness heightens. You become more aware and more awake, but it takes time. And it depends on different people. Some people, they're more receptive, some people, based on where they're at in the moment of their spiritual development, karmic will, whatever, are less receptive. It takes longer for them, but some people catch quickly or quicker. So you can't compare yourself to other people why your sister or your friend, you took him to your guru, your teacher, and they got it. And me, I've been doing this for 30 years and I'm not getting it. You cannot compare yourself to anybody. But what you can do is have the intention and the understanding that by inner work, diving within yourself and the willingness to explore yourself, going in yourself, the willingness to do it. Is where the gems are. Especially now, we're in such a critical time. When this planet, the collective, it's all going through, through it simultaneously right now. And we've been giving this opportunity. Pay attention to yourself. See how much you distract yourself, how much you find distractions, how many excuses you bring not to do inner work for yourself. Oh, I'm too busy, or my family, or we have guests, or da 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 da, or this set, or I have to travel, or the money, or this, or that. Just pay attention to yourself. Look at yourself and see how many excuses you will bring in order not to do inner work. And you can see it because the deeper you go, The deeper is your understanding, the deeper is your understanding, the less the ego, the me, loses its power. Me, 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 loses its power. Hey. 
Anybody has any questions? Feel free, you can either unmute yourself or if you wanna write on the chat box, best is if you unmute yourself and, and we can directly speak. Well, I just want to say thank you Are you for this Yeah, thank you for this opportunity to delve into nothing. This is actually my first time and I'm so appreciative because everything is going so fast and everybody just seems so distracted and chaotic. This is like just the opportunity to hang out. I'm almost in tears. This is just what I've been craving, you know. We need to be still and we need to be silent and together is beautiful. So thank you. You're welcome. Is this Rachel? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Rachel. Welcome. Hi. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm very happy you had a chance to join in today. We pretty much do this every Wednesday. So feel free to join in whenever you have a chance. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. I haven't seen you since Conscious Life Expo, so we can bring Conscious Life right here and right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, nice seeing you again. Likewise, I really appreciate you and your divine energy. Thank you. Take your time throughout the day, consciously, and you don't have to even call it meditation. Just take your time and stop everything you're doing. Wherever you are, let's say you're in a parking lot, you're driving your car, you go to Target, you walk out and you sit in your car. You're in a park, you're in your apartment, house, you're walking by the beach, you're walking wherever. Take your time and stop. And get used to that a habit of pausing. And you know, if you're sitting on a bench in the park or whatever, just sit and just watch. And when you're sitting and watching, naturally after a while your eyes will close And just look inside. Take a look, an examination of what's going on within you. And you're just looking without an idea, blaming yourself or a story will keep appearing like, I was traumatized, I was young, I have these traumas that happened through my childhood. Just watch and see how much your mind is trying to use a past event as a distraction. <clears throat> 
and come up with this story of poor me, or I hate myself, or I have problems, will create a story again to distract you, to drag you into another time, another place, except presence. So as you're working on yourself and you're paying attention, you begin to recognize that. Because you can't recognize state of chaos if you don't recognize silence. But silence and stillness is the very background of who we are. That's why I say we have a tendency to always go inside other things because that's how we've been programmed, yet we don't go inside ourselves. So when you pause and you give yourself your being an opportunity, you've given yourself a chance to stop. And you look inside. And as I said, different things will bubble. Maybe anxiousness, maybe your mind comes. Oh, uh, I, I need to da -da -da go. I need to be here. I need to be there. I need to do this. You're just kind of taking the time and looking without getting engaged with your thoughts or your emotions. You're taking a moment of being really still and taking a look because you're going inward, inward. So you keep doing this work and you go through different layer, layers. And you keep coming to satsang. And the message is always directed in that direction. So you can use this platform or any teacher who's sending you in with one message. And it's not distracting you with blah, 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 or this and that. No, the message is one pointedness. Everything is pointing into one place. Everything is pointing to the source. So this is how you're looking out. Now you've turned it and you're looking in and you take the time during the day you dedicate time to it, to go in, to look in. You're quiet, you're still. And you look inwards towards the source, towards the watcher, towards the one who is aware. You're looking in that direction. And that automatically activates the grid. It activates a mechanism which starts to draw you in. And yes, a part of this journey within you're gonna hit bumps. You're gonna hit fear, anger, jealousy, save hatred, da 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 da, da dark sides, the addictions. It's okay. And they bubble. And they may take you over. But you keep doing the work, you keep looking in. You take your time and look in. It doesn't matter what comes out. You keep the practice. 
And slowly, 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 you begin to discover that your mind has become quiet. Things start to calm down within you. And clarity comes. You begin to see. You begin to trust. You start to recognize that existence has an order. There's an order in life. There's a force that runs the show. God, Her Majesty, the Supreme Presence is the boss running the show. And it knows what it's doing. And it's sourced within yourself. You begin to realize that. Naturally, the quality of your life begins to change. Because from fear, you are sliding into freedom. From fear to freedom. From form to formless, from mind to no mind, from the, from the mind to the heart, from chaos to stillness, from hate to love, things start to change. Regardless of what's going on in the world, the quality of your life starts to get better and better and better. And you use less concepts. You kind of let go of different spiritual ideas, different spiritual teachings. You're no longer looking for psychics. You're not into, you give up astrology, you give up tarot cards, you give up numerology. You start giving up external stuff that they may define you what you do or who you are and what you need to do. You are more and more relying on your inner light, inner wisdom, because you're noticing that the guru, the teacher, is within your own self. Silence becomes the master. You're silent and you're still. The mind's not going a million different directions. You're not running around looking for external distractions. You become you're becoming the Buddha. You're still. No matter what is going on in the outside world, you are still. You are indifferent to what's going on outside. Indifferent to what's going on outside. Yeah, you get this part? Indifferent to what's happening outside. Because you are focused on one point within yourself. That's where the light comes. That's where you're deriving your power. If your attention starts going outside, looking for it outside of yourself, you're in deep shit.
and you suffer. Because it's going to get worse and worse and worse. So use this opportunity, recognize what's going on in the world because it's a divine setup. The entire thing has been set up by God for the few on this planet at this time who are ready to wake up to divert their attention inwards. And stay still in focus. You're still. And then it starts to take over. How are you doing, Connie? I can't hear you, you have to unmute yourself. I'm good, I'm very good. And I like what you are talking about. But uh, it can be a little difficult in between not to be uh, involved in what's going on outside. I mean, you can have a very close relation and something is going on and the emotions are popping up and yeah. But my experience is that, that it's more easy for me now to get rid of it than maybe 10 years ago. But it takes time to learn it. Yes, and you're doing a good job. You're showing up, you're listening, you're alert, you're putting the time, and you're getting the points. Yeah. And that's all you can do. Yeah. And recognizing, recognize one thing is that you're not the one who's doing it. It's, it's God's choice, God's will for you to awaken. Yeah. The same energy, the same force that brought you into this world. Yeah. Because you didn't create this world. When you were born, you could not take care of yourself. Someone else had to take care of you. Yeah. Something has brought you to where you're at right now. Yeah, I agree. So that same thing that's brought you to here, that same thing that gave you this feeling that you are an individual, you are a person is the same force that slowly is showing you nothingness, showing you. Yeah, but. But? But going to nothingness and to, to get rid of the ego. I mean, you need, in my experience, I need to have an ego to, to function in this world. I mean, I can't function without an ego. Well, have you ever functioned without an ego? Only when I sleep, I think. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what it's like functioning in a world without an ego because you've never been there. No. Okay, so your mind is the same ego brings this fear that you need blah, blah, blah. Don't worry about that, okay? No, but, yeah, I can tell you, I had an experience 20 years ago and it was really, it was really out in a space where there was, I was 
I was without a form. I was out. I was without anything, and it was a kind of scaring. I was a little anxious about it, and then I came back. You know. Right. Yeah. So what took you into that experience, and what brought you out of that experience? That I can't tell you. Right. So trust that which is functioning through you by breathing in, breathing out, by bringing you here, by bringing you peace, that which is doing it is going to take care of the rest. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't need to get ahead of yourself. Just practice. Be quiet. Yeah. As you've been doing it. Right? Yeah. Are you taking time to be quiet? Yeah. Yeah. And since you've been doing that, do you feel a difference in the quality of your life? Much more. I feel much more peace inside. Yes. And it's more easy to just um, to just look what's going on without taking it in, just to accept what's going on. I mean. All this, for example, all this uh, COVID, uh, it doesn't bother me so much. I mean, I'm just, yeah, it's going on and yeah, I'm not afraid of it and I'm not uh, upset about all the restrictions. So, yeah, no. Uh, so you're doing, you're on the right path. You can see the difference. Very much. Yeah, so stay on the course. Yeah. Don't worry about if I get to this place, I lose my ego, what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. That's another thought. Yeah. Which is created by the ego itself. Yeah. So don't worry about any of these things. Just no. continue what you're doing. If it's good to you, it's good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Happy. I'm glad that you shared your thoughts and your feelings with me. Stay on the course. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just keep going. Be patient. It's got its own way of doing it. For each, every person is different. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So does the joy come then from after taking the silence and doing the inner work, being able to witness the absurdity of the illusion? Like, is that part of when you say God's giving us the opportunity to wake up? Maybe if we feel like we were already awake and understanding that this is illusion, just laughing, being able to laugh at the extreme absurdity that maybe it's taking certain individuals for that much absurdity to realize that this is an illusion or right the okay. is, that's a great question the same creator who has created this whole thing and with this hypnosis that we are individuals separated from the source with this sense of do doer, personal doership. The same one that has created it is the same one that slowly walks you to this illumination. So it's all designed to be this way from the beginning to the end. So something that created the world put you or put me in this hypnosis that I am an individual separated from the whole and I need to get to a place. And then later on, well, self-awakening kind of kicks in. Now I become a bhakti. Now I'm looking for God and I start searching. 
which that by itself is also a part of the plan. So something has triggered inside me. Now I start recognizing God, spirit, and I want to awaken. So now the rest of my life, I'm on this self-awakening process. And then whether I awaken in this life or not, that's a different story. But it's all being done by the same force, by the same being. Now, depending on where you're at on this karmic will, and I'm using it karmic will as a way of saying it. It's just to point of reference. What happens is the more you're coming to these teachings, this particular one, which is the end, the last teaching, because this teaching is not going to give you something to do. It's very different than neo spirituality. Like what's happening right now in the world, a lot of the teachings, they're telling you to do this, to do that, implement this practice, implement that practice, blah, 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 blah. Inner work, inner child, da, 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 da. work on yourself, work on your wounds and all that stuff, which ultimately activates the mind. It makes you keep thinking and, and it's distraction. But this teach, teaching is about being silent, be quiet. It's teaching you not to activate the mind, to go beyond the mind. So the more you, if you're attracted to it, which again, depends on where you're at in your spiritual development. But if you get attracted to these teachings and you become alert, means the more you follow it and the more you're quiet and you learn how to go beyond the mind, the more you dive into the heart, the more bliss begins to appear and bubble up because you have gone beyond the world of the thoughts. The mind is always busy. Oh, what's going to happen? How am I going to get money? How about next year when I run out of this money? Who's going to take care of me? Or what's going to happen with the COVID? And if they come mutates and they come and do another sets of vaccination, or where is the world going to go? Or what's going to happen with the economy? The mind wants to go crazy. And the media outside is a reflection of the crazy mind. The crazy mind is a reflection of the media. So everything is, has accelerated or it appears to be that way. So it's fast. Uh, all these things is happening, this craziness in the mind and outside. So the wise one recognizes that. And in order to free herself, himself recognizes that it needs to be quiet or needs to be around those who understand silence. So you link into that. So use teachings that helps you to go beyond the mind. And you can't quiet the mind with the mind. That activates the mind. So you have to learn a system to go beyond the mind and the more you're quiet, and the more you learn to be still, you implement that during the day in your life of stop everything and just stay really still. What happens is slowly an activation takes place. Something starts to get more activated and it starts to grow because 
the more you're quiet, the more you are still in this place, the higher become your vibrations. Your vibration starts to rise to a higher frequency because you have separated yourself from the rest of the world, from the world of Maya, the world of thoughts. Because this dimension that you're dealing with, you're looking at it, you're engaged with it, is a dimension of thoughts. It's all made out of thoughts. Everything is a thought. And I know there are schools that they want to teach you how to control your thoughts or how to manifest things so things go your way. But that's completely opposite of what I teach because that activates your mind more. So that's going to just drag you more into the gutter. So you have to discipline yourself to avoid that. Those schools, the news, the media, you have to disengage from all of it for whatever time you can during the day. So you get used to something completely the opposite of everything else in the world. It's from also your childhood, they've been telling you, think about your future. Rachel, think about your retirement, your schooling, your this, your that, education. Think of future. Think of it. So now you come to this. Obviously, that way has brought us to this where we're at. The mess we're in, the chaos, and we're in, it didn't work. So why don't I take my time and do something else? Give it a try. I have nothing to lose. The world is gonna go down in the gutter anyway. So why don't I try something different? So then I come across Ramana Maharshi an Advaita master, the yani. And what do they teach? They teach silence, be quiet. So I start to be quiet. And I sit, and I spend time being still. But when I start doing it, what happens is slowly, slowly, I start to realize that I'm being, my vibration starts to rise to a higher frequency because I'm not involved in the world of thoughts. I'm not involving myself with the news. I'm not involving myself with all these messages. I'm disconnecting from it. I'm not living in denial. I'm just taking the time to disconnect from it because I want to give this a chance to see what's gonna happen. Now, the more I'm quiet, it's a transition from the head to the heart. The more I start to feel my heart's open, the more I start to feel the presence the more I feel love, something starts to get stronger here. It bubbles up. One way of saying it is my vibration rising to a higher frequency, or my heart starts to open to the presence, to love, the divine self. I'm starting to recognize Her Majesty, the Supreme is here. God is here. Love is here. And it takes over. The mind becomes quiet, and the source, the force, shows its who's the boss, who's running the show. And I'm definitely taken care of. And in that, as your vibration starts to rise to a higher frequency, the utter world 
the world outside you, which here in the 3D you were facing it, and it was chaos because your mind is chaotic too. It's all chaos. But now you're coming to the world of silence. So the utter world begin to shift. Harmony begin to appear in your life. This is opposite of what a lot of people are teaching. And I don't want to name teachers. And they're all teaching about positive visualization, positive thinking, positive affirmation. None of that stuff. They're all activating your mind. You have to stop all of it. And just be quiet. Did any of it make any sense, uh, Rachel? Not only makes sense, <clears throat> I think, um, so what you're saying is when you're withdrawing your attention from something that maybe it's a truth or it's not a truth, by withdrawing your attention and being silent, it allows for the real truth to emerge, which is joy, which is bliss. Absolutely, you got it. And okay. that is what very little people in this lifetime do. So the, the, the more you recognize that, the more wisdom and knowledge come. So give yourself this opportunity and dive into it for a while. You can always go back to your old ways, but give it a try and see what happens. Hi, Shadi. Nice to have you. Good seeing you. Happy you could make it today. Yeah. Keep in mind that the pseudo-spirituality, the spirituality is being taught and practiced right now in past maybe 15 years. And it's very attractive and it's really out there. Has never produced an enlightened being. There's never been an enlightened master, prophet, saint, sage that has a busy mind. All of awakened beings, they all have come to silence. They all have gone beyond the mind. I'm not saying if you come to full realization that the mind is not there. But you have surpassed the mind. You have discovered silence. Thoughts come and go. But you're no longer taking it as you. And it's very simple. You can't be your mind. You can't 
be aware of your thoughts and be your thoughts in the same time. Because if you were your mind, if you were your thinking thoughts, you would have never been aware of it. That would have been your only reality. You must be outside of the mind that you can observe it. People come and tell me, I have a very busy mind, I have so much thoughts. Well, how are you aware of them? You have to be somewhere else in silence. That is aware of a mind going crazy. Similarly to your emotions. You wake up in the morning and you wake up with anxiety. All of a sudden, you just woke up for no apparent reason. You're feeling anxiety. Okay. And you treat it with whatever you have to do. But you wake up in the morning and you feel very grim. You feel sad, you feel depressed. But you're aware that you're depressed or you're aware you have anxiety. So then you do your morning ritual, whatever you do, and by noon, the anxiety is no longer there or the sadness or depression is no longer there. Now you're neutral. Then you get some good news or your girlfriend calls you and says, hey, let's go out have lunch together, so you go out to a nice place, having lunch, having a glass of wine, you know, some are beautiful, and now you're happy. So now you're aware that you're happy. So in the morning, you were aware you had anxiety or you had depression. At noontime, you're aware that you're neutral. By, by afternoon, you're aware that you're happy. Something must be still and not changing that can observe these different emotions come and go. So something inside you is not affected. Something inside you is still and it's silent. That is aware of the mind being busy. That is aware of emotions come and go. And that same one has been observing your body changing. Some days you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, oh, I feel so, what happened to this new wrinkles or whatever. Some days you look at yourself and you look really good. So you're aware that the body is changing too. Who is aware of it? Who is this that's aware of the mind going crazy? A lot of thoughts. Who is this that is aware of emotions? Come and go. You're happy, you're sad, you're angry, you're jealous, you're sad, you're horny, you're this. And who is aware of the body? And who is aware of the changes in the world? Something must be inside you that is always still and is not changing. And that's why I share with all of you always, be quiet and bring your attention inside because you touch that place and you recognize that place inside yourself. And that's where peace is. That's where love is. And that's where the salvation is. Everything else is gonna come and go. Because everything else is made of thoughts. 
It's the world of thoughts, including you. To find the truth of who you are, you have to go beyond the thoughts. And that's why in the beginning, when I first started it, I said, we all been in this life to go in something else. As I mentioned earlier, he said, if you're a man, whole time you want to go inside a woman. If you're a woman, whole time you want a man to go inside you. You go inside the car, you go inside the plane, you go inside a train, you go inside a restaurant, you go in the ocean, you go... You always want to go inside something, but you don't go inside yourself. And only inside yourself, you're going to find that place, that which is non-changing, that which is always still. And when you discover that and you touch it, your life transforms. And it's ir irreversible. And I'm sure some of you, like my dear sister Candace, who did the life training program together, she discovered it. She recognized that place. And her life changed forever. Am I right, Miss Candace? Yes, you are very right. Yeah, you discovered for years and years you were on, you were a spiritual seeker, you were looking until you came across this teachings. Yes. And what was this teaching? All it was, was be quiet. Look inside. <laughs> Stay still. Yeah. You really convinced me to um, give up listening to things all the time. I was always listening to Audible or YouTube or something. And I've like, all of that is gone now. And I just, I'm so in love with the silence. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm so proud of you. And the quality of life that changes because peace comes to your life. Anxiety and worry disappears. And so many of us throughout, throughout our lives, we've never lived with that. Right. We've never gone through life without anxiety or worry or anxiousness. So we don't even know ourselves. What is it like to be in this peaceful place? Yeah, we get glimpses of it. When the boy meets the girl, the girl meets the boy, you know, they want to get married or they're in love. Yes, there is a taste of peace or you finally get to the object of your desire. You finally get what you wanted. Yeah, there's a momentarily peace. For a day or two or three, you're happy. But then the mind creeps, creeps in again. Emotions come back. But this one is permanent. All right. So our next academy will be next Wednesday. Hopefully by then I'll be back in Los Angeles. I'll try to set up the studio to broadcast from LA. Uh, that's the intention. Um, those of you, I know a number of you have paid for the shamanic uh, healing circle. Just bear with me. I'm going to conduct it 
uh, I'm going to be doing it from Los Angeles because today I had to go to the neighbors and ask them to stop doing construction for a couple of hours. So it's uh, those of you who've been with me, you, you know that it's been very challenging for me to broadcast from here. So uh, I was hoping maybe I do it this week, but there is a new construction started happening. Uh, luckily, they were kind enough to listen to me and not do anything right now. So bear with me. I'm going to be offering it to you, uh, and I'll do it when I'm back in L.A. Um, in the meantime, the only other thing I have to offer is my life training program. Uh, some of you have been with me. It's, it's a three months of private coaching and the program, we get together, we talk about it. And once we decide to go for it, then I design a um, tailor-made specific program for your spiritual needs. And then I work with you with that. So that's the only thing I have to offer at this point. Uh, once I go back to California and I settle, then uh, I'll make an announcement depending uh, how long I will be there and what the situation is. And then we'll go from there. But definitely the shamanic healing circle, I will be offering it when I'm back in LA. Uh, if you're interested in life training program, you're welcome to contact me. My email is info at zaratustra.tv. My website is zaratustra.tv. And all my channels, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter is zaratustra5d. A copy of this broadcast will be emailed to you. It will go on my YouTube channel. And it will be posted on my website. I look forward to seeing you next week and feel free to reach out. If there's any other questions, anyone has a question or comment before we move on with the day? Yes, um, I was kind of curious about last week. We yeah, last week, I don't remember what I talked about, to be honest with you, but you're welcome to go on my website and uh, yeah. we're on Facebook or YouTube, and mm -hmm. uh, it will be there. Okay, thank you. I honestly don't remember what I talked about, unless okay. somebody knows what we talked about. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Nice to see you, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for being patient. I tried to think about it, but I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> So let's just, uh, now that our friend Shadi is off work and she can hang out with us, let's just sit in silence for a few moments and a very simple way of meditation, because meditation is not something you do. Meditation is something that occurs on its own. It's a natural phenomenon. We all have done meditation unconsciously. So simply to go beyond the mind, you switch, shift your attention inwards. Some people will say, well, what do you mean by shifting your attention inwards? It's very simple. You can observe your mind and your thinking. If you can catch your thoughts, follow your thoughts to the source. Where do your thoughts come from? Just look inside, pay attention to your thoughts, and see where they come from. As you look within,
you follow them, everything becomes quiet. It's very, very simple. You simply look to see where, where do my thoughts originate from? And then you fall into this deep, silent place. As you become quiet and your attention goes within, you feel that your heart's opening up. You feel there's a presence. Something activates, something opens up. You can feel there is a field around you. You can call it the auric field. You feel the love that is here. This is your divine self. This is your own self. Bring your attention to this part. Bring your attention to your inner love. God. Yourself. Your mind's quiet. Therefore, there is no self-judgment. You are love, you are God, and you're taken care of, you're protected. Everything is going to be okay. Everything is fine in this moment when you're in the center of yourself, you feel the presence of God within yourself. You feel you're complete. Presence is here. And simply accept and love yourself in this moment the way you are without any projecting that you should be different or you should be somewhere else. Simply here, I love myself. And allow love to take over. Remember, this is your power. This can never be taken away from you. Love. You are love because it's coming out of you and in the absence of the mind, in the absence of the craziness of the mind, you begin to feel the presence, the divine self. And the more you stay in this place, the more you come to this place, the more you recognize your power. That no force in the world, the media, the governments, the corporations, the armies, no, nothing in the world has the power over you when you come to your own center, when you tap into who you are, your divine presence, not just some words, 
But now that you are here, you feel it. This is your power. This is who you are. This is who you are. And you experience it more and more when you're quiet. The more you're quiet, the stronger the presence appear to be because you're not distracted with blah, blah, blah. So if you're afraid of the world, what's going on, what's happening, then your way of salvation is to learn to hang out in the space, come back to the space, come back to this place. Hang out here. We're still, we're quiet, and your power appears, love appears. And in that, you recognize that all is well. because you are directly in touch with your own divinity. You begin to recognize God is here and God is the boss. Everything else is under it. Governments, COVID, all of these things have no power when God is in your life. When you find God in your heart, everything else becomes irrelevant. Everything else is the mind. It's all blah, blah, blah. I'm rich, I'm beautiful, I'm powerful, I got this, I got that. They're all irrelevant. This one. Is your power. And is here.
Thank you for joining me. Stay in your meditation, stay in your space after we finish the academy and try not to right away get engaged with your phone or computer or TV or whatever. Just stay in this space, hang out in this place, the holy place, your own self, your own beauty, your own love. Recognize how beautiful you are. Recognize your own beauty. It has nothing to do with physical appearance. It has nothing to do with your financial status. It has nothing to do with any external stuff. It's the presence. When you're quiet and you're in your heart, you experience God who you are. Your mind will come and say blah, 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 but don't pay attention to that. It's the ego. Simply bring your attention to this. Here, now. Recognize this part, recognize the love, the power that it's within you, not as an individual, not as an egoistic thing, not that me, 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 no, despite of me, when you're present here in this moment. Recognize this. Stay with it. Just stay with it. Your mind's silent. You're still. You're not anxious. No stories. Put your story away, whatever the story is, and just feel the presence, the beauty. The beauty, the love that emanates from you. It surrounds you. It dances around you. It plays around you. It's who you are.
Namaste. I look forward to seeing you next week. Be kind to yourself, be loving to yourself. Don't judge yourself, don't blame yourself. That's all the mind. Come back to this place. You're beautiful the way you are and you're powerful when you're God. So stay in your heart, stay in your love. Love you very much.